Make some crafty creatures like a sock arm puppet, some bugs and butterflies from balloons, a long-legged bear, and a sock bird today on Hands On. Hands On is made possible by Elmer's Products Incorporated, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business. Elmer's.com Floracraft Foam Make It Fun MakeItFunCrafts.com Hi, I'm Candy Cooper, and this is our first project. We want crafting to become a part of your everyday. Surround yourself with things you make and make being creative a part of who you are. Today, we're making crafty creatures. They can be based on a real animal or just something you create with your mind. The crazier, the better. Our first creature is this sock arm puppet. I think he looks like a caterpillar. What do you think? Check out these crazy legs. Let's see what we need to make him. Okay, the first thing you're going to need is some feathers for the hair, some long chenille stems like these I have here, some corrugated cardboard, googly eyes, white acrylic craft paint, a sock, an old sweatshirt or a repurposed sweatshirt, something nice and soft, um, some glue dots, thick tacky glue, clothespins, some uh, craft felt, two one inch styrofoam balls, and some long pens. Let's get started. I'm so excited to show you this. The first thing you're going to do is cut off the sleeve of your sweatshirt. And this is gonna make Gavin the Caterpillar's body. Once you cut that off, we can start into constructing the head. Now, I've started with a couple one inch balls but you can actually fo form these between your fingers to make them look a little bit more like eyeballs. And I do it just like so, and then smush it down on the table like this to get two eyeballs. And you wanna do that to both. And then you're going to paint them with the white acrylic paint. And that just, I know the foam is already white, but this makes them really bright, like funny giant googly eyes. Once you get those painted, you're gonna use glue dots to attach the eyes, and I just press those off like that and then put the eyes in place. And you could paint your eyeballs other colors than white if you wanted. I've got a couple right here. All the patterns for Gavin's face are on our website. So I've got some tongues here. You could use pink, sparkly, or red. The mouthpiece for the inside of the sock, and of course, some crazy eyelashes made out of felt. To make them flutter like that, you want to just snip in about a half inch all across the top. When you cut them, you're going to use thick glue to attach them to the eyeballs. And let's let those sit up while we work on the next part. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is actually cut the inside of the puppet mouth out of corrugated cardboard. And this keeps it nice and sturdy on the uh, inside of the mouth. I've already put a piece of cardboard in here. It's folded in half, you can see. And to keep it secure, you're just going to cut a snip inside of the sock, squeeze some glue in there, and you wanna use this thick craft glue versus a school glue because sometimes school glue is runny and it'll soak through your sock and then you'll see it. And you don't wanna see it. Don't worry about the slit because we're gonna cover that here in a minute. But you wanna just press that in place, get it right where you want it. You can even put your hand back in and position it. 
and then set it aside to dry. I've got a purple one that I've been working on here and I just put it over a glue bottle so he'll stay nice while I'm working. Okay, the first thing you're going to add is the mouth. Followed by the tongue piece. We'll give her a pink tongue this time. And then on the outside, you can hold these in place with some um, clothespins if you want. On the outside, we're gonna add the eyeballs. We'll stretch this down a little bit more. Now, this is kind of weird, but you're gonna actually poke some pins. Let me get down here where I can show you. Poke some pins through the tops of the eyes, and these will hold, help hold them in place while our tacky glue sets up. And I like to put them just behind the seam on the toe of the sock. Just a second, and I'll turn them around so you can see. And then just push that pin down so that it stays secure while it dries. And got one more. I already put glue on there, I forgot. Here we go. And he's starting to take shape, he or she. Gavin's kind of a boy or girl name these days. Okay, now I've cut a little piece of feather boa and glued it in a ring. And now I'm gonna just put some glue. You have to use a, a pretty hefty amount of glue when working with feathers because the core of the feather is down underneath all the fluff. So now we're just gonna set that right behind the eyeballs. And this is where either you can close pin it. The felt doesn't weigh too much, so we can just close pin this together. And you wanna get it just how you like it before you close pin it because it's gonna take a couple hours to dry. And we could also stick some pins down through the middle. He looks pretty crazy with all this stuff coming out of him, doesn't he? Okay, very crazy. Okay, let's jump over to the sleeve and how we make the body. I've got my sleeve right here. So basically what you're going to do is put this on your arm and then grab whatever color you want of these ginormous chenille stems and then wrap them around so they're even and then make a twist a couple times. And this makes it, you don't have to glue them. This makes it so you can interchange the colors of your legs. You could make rainbow legs for your caterpillar. You can have a friend, this is a great part to have a friend help you do because it's more fun to craft with friends anyway. Okay, and you can give them a little bend like so at the end. And now our puppet is ready to take a walk. Let me put the finished one on so you can see the full picture. I may have made this one a little bit snug. Here we go. And you can leave these on or you can slide them off. You can make other outfits and embellishes for, embellishments for them. You could make a bow tie. And I like to put the seam facing down. I've made this one to fit my arm perfectly, but you wanna make sure the legs are all down like so, so he's ready to take a walk. And we'll slide Gavin's head on. Here he comes, get ready. You wanna just tuck the end of your sock down underneath the sleeve. Got a nice Adam's apple on him too. And let's see, are you ready Gavin? He says he's ready. And now all you have to do is have your friends make a couple more and you can put on your own puppet show. Yay! You might have made balloon animals, but I bet you never used the ends to make bugs and butterflies. Let's take a look at these crazy critters. Do you recognize the parts of the balloon, these little rings? Let's see what else we need to make them. Obviously, you need your balloons. Then we've got some glitter pens and a couple different um, choices. Magnets, wire, some thick craft glue, and some wire cutters. Let's get rolling. The first thing you're going to do is with your package of balloon, cut off all of the ends of the balloons. It's the part right where you put your mouth if you're going to blow it up. And I'm, I'm sure you can come up with something else 
to make with your extra balloon piece. So I would save those for later. When you're finished, you'll have several different rings. Now for the fun part of uh, laying them out into insects. I've got one that I've started here, and you can see that this is going to be the start of a dragonfly. To glue them down, you just want to add a ring of glue on directly onto your foam. And it doesn't matter if it kind of sticks out the ends because you're going to fill the centers and you're going to, um, the glue will dry clear. So no big deal if you're a little sloppy on this part. So you would just keep gluing and arranging as you go, making your insects or whatever shapes you want. And you'll have something that looks like this. Now I've got a couple different pens, some glitter glue pens that we're going to fill each of the balloon rings in with. Let's start with the head. And you don't have to, if it's a red balloon, you don't have to use a red glitter pen, but that's what I've got here. And then I'm gonna use a, a swirly glitter pen for this one. And that comes out multicolored. And then you can add some yellow. And you would just keep filling until you have the entire bug glitters like that. To make the antenna, I've got one right here. You just need a little piece of wire. This is thin wire, 26 gauge. And you're gonna bend it in half and then grab the ends with your fingers and roll them down like so. And you could make them longer if you want. I'm doing little short ones here. So you have something like that. And this takes a minute, the glue takes a minute to set up so you can still stick that in. And I think I'm gonna add a little bit more glitter on top to make sure it's really down in there. And then you would just set this aside to dry. It may take 24 hours, depending on if you live in a humid uh, climate. And now I've got a blue and green one here that I did. You wanna make sure that you put all your little balloon pieces in a safe spot and your wires. And now we're gonna cut this out with some scissors. And you can choose to leave a little border or cut right up next to the balloons. I'm gonna leave a little border of white. And then I'm gonna come in here and on around the wing. This foam cuts so easy, like butter. And then come on down here, and then up like so, and on around. And you know what I was just thinking is we're making magnets today, but these would also make really cute pins to give as a gift. You could put a pin back on the back instead of a magnet. And we're almost done cutting it out. And now we're going to put a little magnet piece on the back. And you could have several of these created so that you have a whole bug farm by the, time, by the end of the day. Let's take a look at our finished little gathering of insects. I love how sparkly they are with those colored wire antenna. Any animal becomes a lot craftier when you change them in some way, like this long-legged teddy bear. We've named this one Ernie. He's got super cute long legs wrapped in Chanel stems. Let's see what else we need to make them. You'll need, of course, the chenille stems, especially the cinnamon color, cardstock, some cream colored craft felt, some tiny embellishments like glass beads, a tan pom pom, a pin, possibly some fishing weights, toothpicks, two, or excuse me, you only need one, one inch craft ball, a styrofoam egg, a three inch styrofoam ball, and a large styrofoam egg, some cinnamon acrylic paint, a dowel rod, 
some thick craft glue, and we're ready to get started. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is prep your foam. So for his hen, we've taken the ball and just rolled it in between the, the table and our hand. And this gives it kind of an oval shape. And you wanna keep working it until it's nice and even all the way around. And you kind of have to get down and check it every so often, but you can see how that's kind of rounded out. This makes his head more oval versus round. The next thing, the egg is perfectly great as it is. The next thing you wanna do is cut the egg in half. And this is to make his two bare paw feet. So you're just going to use a sawing motion. Try to keep it as even as you can. And then you can sand the two pieces together to remove the extra fuzzies. I call them fuzzies even, maybe we should call them foamies. And those are set. And then you've got your two styrofoam balls. Ah, oh, we, we don't, yes, we do need two of these. These are for his paws. So you're, to prep those, you're just going to pinch them in between your hands like this and then taper them and that gives them a little bit of a ball shape. Okay, so we've got two paws and two feet. We're good to go. Now, we're gonna, going to use the cinnamon colored paint so it matches our chenille stems. And you're just going to paint over all of your foam surfaces. And you wanna make sure that you get a good amount of paint on the end of your brush because that's what gets down into the pores of the styrofoam. Just like so. So paint each and every single one of your styrofoam pieces. Let me set these aside, I've got some ready to go. Now, to assemble your teddy bear, he's got lots of little parts and pieces. One thing, once you get your egg painted, you'll wanna take the end of it, the tapered end, and push it down on the end of a table because this gives it a flat spot for where his head is going to connect. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put a toothpick in and then I'm gonna apply a lot of glue, like so, and then I'm gonna use a skewer to kind of start the hole for where his neck will be. And you're gonna put those two together like so. And that gives him a nice sturdy head. Now to prep the ears, you're going to, um, you can find the patterns on our website and you'll cut this piece out of cardstock and paint it the same color as the cinnamon. Then take a chenille stem and coil it down and this is gonna make his nice fuzzy ears. Once you get it coiled, it'll look something like this. Put a little bit of glue down and you can glue that on top, followed by two tiny, or a tiny circle of cream craft felt, like so. Just like that, and I've got two ready to go here. So these are his ears, I've got two eyes, glass eyes, I've got a nose, and I think we're ready to put these together. So you can take the end of your knife and right where the ears go on either side, push the knife into place. Then put a little bit of glue over the slits. Don't worry if you get a little bit where it's not supposed to be, that'll dry clear. And then you set these into place with the little tabs. Those go right down in our slots, like so. Now let's talk about the arms and legs. We've got our little bear paws already painted. And to make them, you take the end of a chenille stem and then wrap it with another, like so. And you can see we've done that. And then you just poke those down into the ends of your paws and that makes his two arms. Let's put those in. And then to make the, a, the legs, we'll make that one wavy. You've got a dowel rod that needs to be painted as, as well. And then to cut this, you're just going to cut two six inch pieces. And I'm using wire cutters to make a little nick. You'll want to make sure you're using your old wire cutters. 
and that helps it to snap evenly. And then you're gonna wrap those pieces in chenille stems. And you'll poke two holes right in the bottom of your bear. And then each of the limbs, you'll need to use glue to attach them. And he's coming together. Now for the feet, you can put those on the same way. I'm just using a spare piece of dowel rod. And you're gonna glue those on. But to make them stand easily, you're just going to push in some fishing weights down in the bottom. And that gives him just enough weight on his toes so he stands nice and straight. And you can glue all of these pieces on as you go. But I just wanna show you the basic construction. And now to finish off his face, we've got a pom-pom on top of a pom-pom. And you just string those all on a pin and then you would glue that in. And then push two glass beads in. And you wanna make sure the hole in the bead isn't showing for his eyes. And then I've added a little oval of craft felt for his belly. Just make sure all of your pieces are glued securely and he's ready to go. Get out your old socks to make this crafty bird. Can you guess where the sock is? It's covering his whole body. Let's see what else we need to make it. You'll need some wiggly eyes, some craft felt in a few different colors for his wings and tails, feathers, some thread, a styrofoam egg and ball, some socks, of course, the patterns from our website, some thick craft glue, a needle, and we're ready to go. So you're gonna start out by putting the small ball into the toe of the sock. This is going to make his head. And you wanna get it nice, the sock nice and stretched over the... Then you're going to put the wide end of the egg in first so it's up against the ball and this is going to make the body. I'm using these really fun and funky colored socks. You can probably find some socks maybe that you're tired of in your drawer to make this little bird. Okay, and you just wanna make sure it's all pushed up together and there's no extra room in between the two foam pieces and that it's nice and even. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is wind some thread around the neck and this will pull the snug in tight, the sock in tight, so there's some definition between the head and body. And then you're just gonna tie a knot or a bow, whatever you prefer. Like so. And one more to make sure it's secure. And I think we got it. And then you're going to trim the ends so it's not all loose and raggedy. Okay, let's do the same thing for the back. I love the rim of this sock, how it's hot pink. Okay, we're gonna leave a little bit of tail and then we're just gonna wind again. And that should do it. And then you're going to repeat tie, tying a little knot here, like so. Now we need to be thinking about what colors we wanna make our wings and tail feathers. For this bird, I'm making it in green and aqua. And remember our patterns are on the website. You'll wanna cut out two large hearts for the wings, two small hearts for the wings, the beaks, and one each of the tail feathers. And to assemble these, you're just gonna glue the two heart pieces together. I have already done that one. But you're just gonna put them just like so. And we're gonna go ahead and glue the, tail, the small tail feather on top of the large tail feather. And then we're gonna put a little bit of glue in the end of the sock and put those in so they kind of peek out the end. And then we're gonna glue the wings on the sides. And you can use some pins to hold these in place while they dry. 
I'm using this thick craft glue again on fabric because it sits nicely on top of the surface. It's not too runny, so it's not going to saturate my sock. And I've got those nice and even. I need another pin to hold that down. And we're ready to give them some real personality. We're going to add a beak. You can glue just one beak piece or two to make them look like he might be ch so he can chirp like birds do. And he's starting to come to life. Before I put the eyes on, I'm going to uh, make it so he can hang like an ornament. And to do that, I've just threaded my needle with some thread, doubled it over. I'm making a little knot at the end so it doesn't sneak out the other side. And then you just skim through the surface of the sock, pull it up, cut the needle from the thread, and make another overhand knot. Can you imagine making these in holiday co colors so you can hang a bunch in your Christmas tree? They would look so cute. And now all you would do is add a couple dots for the eyes. Let's take a look at our crafty bird. He is so cute. Thanks for watching. See you next time as Hands On introduces some very unusual holidays. I bet they're ones you might not have heard of. See you soon. Projects and ideas from today's show, plus hundreds of other kids' craft projects for every occasion, season, and even school subject are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is show 1501. Hands On is made possible by Elmer's Products Incorporated, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business. Elmers.com. Floracraft Foam. Make it fun. MakeItFunCrafts.com.